One thing I think we've all learned from this whole experience, when dealing with the unknown, the first thing to lean on is reliable data. It is the best way to warn the public. However, data collection could pose some privacy rights issues. Here to discuss this matter is Amin Mashariki, Global Director of the Data Lab, a World Resources Institute Fellow at the Beek Center for Social Impact and Innovation at Georgetown. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Well, we know that hurricane season is also coming. We've got COVID-19 June 1st. Uh, we've got all kinds of things uh, that happen. What is going to happen with COVID-19 and the emergency officials uh, using the data to find out exactly how to prepare us? Well, I think um, for any type of emergency, there's you know sort of key sets of data that tend to be used. Um, and what we've seen over time, we, we, we saw it in a big way, Katrina, and we saw it during Sandy, and we, we even saw it um, here during the COVID-19 emergency that we tend to leave out these vulnerable populations when we are using data to really um, uh, provide resources and mechanisms to get out in front of all of these challenges that these sorts of emergencies tend to bring. And so while there are core data sets that we do tend to use, um, what we leave out as, as, as government entities are really key data sets that help us uh, impact uh, the vulnerable, the most vulnerable uh, communities. The, the term that I like to use is, you know, there are known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. And when it comes to data about these vulnerable communities, that gets us into this, excuse me, into the space of the unknown unknowns. Well, let me ask you this. Why can't it seem that our uh, governments and our, our civic leaders can't seem to walk and chew gum at the same time in this country, both protect our people and our data privacy rights in concert with one another? Well, I think, um, this is a new space for government entities, right? Private sector has been doing it for a while. This is a new space in terms of managing data rights because there's been such a data revolution over the last decade or so, right? They say over the last three years, 90% of the world's data has been created, right? And so there's been such a data revolution that this is a new space and that the government is getting its arms wrapped around. And so that causes uh, the challenge, but also the skill sets, the capability um, of individuals who have data science and artificial intelligence and data strategy degrees and competencies are just now starting to become a new thing in government as well. So it's also a skill set as well. A lot of the African American community isn't even aware of the importance of artificial intelligence and the ways that it is uh, becoming more and more part of our regular life. Is there any way you could speak to that? Yeah, you know, my view is that they should be less uh, uh, interested in sort of the artificial intelligence algorithms, be more interested in what data about themselves are being used in those algorithms, right? And we should be clear, there should be a high level of transparency into the data that we own, that is our data that is being used in these algorithms to either track or perform positive targeted outreach to us. So it's less about understanding what AI does, it's really understanding what data um, uh, of ours is being used in these algorithms. The second is, you know, to the question around this AI concept, I think most of these vulnerable communities should begin to understand who's developing these algorithms, right? Is it people that look like them? Because we've seen researchers at MIT and we've seen Wall Street Journal and New York Times do articles around um, algorithm development uh, uh, by people who are, who are of a certain uh, uh, ethnic and racial background that tend to have negative impacts on people who are of other ethnic and racial backgrounds. So there should be clarity around who's building these algorithms that's gonna impact us, but also how are they using my data in those algorithms? And how are they getting the data? Can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, well, governments tend to collect data about the citizens, about the residents uh, over the course of daily operations that they perform during the day. It could be any type of service, uh, that uh, health service or social service that the government performs and that data uh, comes in. There's also uh, ways where citizens and residents elect to give data. For instance, in New York City, where I was the chief analytics officer, 
um, we have 311, and 311 is in most cities uh, across the nation. And this is where people call in and share information about any number of things, right? And so that is um, information that they give as well. So there's many different ways that governments tend to collect uh, data, and it's been being collected about its citizens for decades upon decades. This is not a new thing. Data collection is not a new thing. What's key is better understanding how to use that data to help the vulnerable population. That's very informative, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm in Ra Mashariki. Thank you for your time and for this wonderful, good, solid information we can use. Thank you for having me.